Dr. Oz is being held as a hero for helping to save a man's life after he collapsed at Newark Airport. Dr. Oz, along with the Port Authority officers, used a defibrillator to get the man breathing on his own. And Dr. Oz joining us this morning. Dr. Oz, man, let me say this. If I ever get in a life or death situation, I want you to be near me. Well, you're very kind, Lori. I hope it doesn't happen, but when it does, it's pretty scary. And you, since you bring it up, the reason to learn CPR, which is what saved this gentleman's life at Newark Airport Monday night, is because the person whose life you'll save will be someone you care about. You know why? Because that's who you hang with. So most of the time, you'll be helping someone that you really, really right. want to help. Well, walk us through what happened at Newark Airport. It, it was your, your daughter. Who was it, Daphne? It was Arabella, the, the therapist, the calm one in the family. And I was getting my luggage like I'm supposed to. My wife had ordered me over there doing my job. Mm -hmm. And I heard her voice say, say, Daddy, Daddy, come. And any father recognizes that alarm in their child's voice. So I, I turned and I realized that this gentleman had collapsed in front of her. Uh, he didn't say collapse. He timbered over and smacked his head on the, on the, on this pavement. And uh, they, there was blood, a little pool of blood around his head. So mm -hmm. I ran over. He was purple, like the color of an eggplant. And I couldn't get a pulse, so I realized that he had actually experienced what we call sudden death. I rolled him on his back. He was a big guy, so it took some effort. But once I got him on his back, I could open his chest, and there was a scar down the middle of his chest indicating he'd had prior surgery, mm. uh, the kind of surgery I'd do. He'd had heart surgery. So I started doing chest compressions, and this officer, Croissant, who's from... A wonderful group, by the way. The Newark Port Authority police were fantastic. They really are the heroes here. He kneeled down, and he told me, I can do CPR if you want. Now, what I didn't know, and I just found out, is that he actually had never done it on a person before. Really? <laughs> so you had to walk him through that? Yeah. He'd been trained how to do it. So he knew that you had to get over the person's chest, get as a big guy, he's got to push hard. You want to push the chest down about two inches, 100 times a minute. Go as fast as, as you, you know, think you might need to go to get the, the 100 times a minute. But as he did that, that freed me to start to get his airway, this gentleman's airway clear, because he was having frothy material coming out of his lungs. Uh, th that's what happens if your heart stops beating. The, the blood backs up into the lungs, and you get what's called pulmonary edema. Any case, I'm trying to manage his airway, trying to get air into his lungs. And another uh, New York uh, a new, uh, Port Authority doc mm -hmm. officer came over with a defibrillator. We put those patches on his chest, and the machine will tell you exactly what to do. So please don't be intimidated by them when you walk by him in the airport or anywhere you are next time. Mm -hmm. The machine at some point said, the heart's not beating, step away, and then it shocked them. And Laura, you know in the movies when the patient gets shocked and they come back and they're fine? Right. I mean, that doesn't happen. <laughs> I mean, you shock the person, they jump, but then it doesn't work. You got to keep going over and over again. But do in you read case, something that says that you have, that, that he's got a pulse back? It tells you. It, it, uh, it'll say pulse detected or uh, mm. no more shock. It'll just tell you that, there's, that you're back in a good spot. You can feel if you, you know, for a pulse as well. And then I did in the neck because that's where I was positioned. But uh, the machine will actually say uh, either resume CPR, which means you don't have a pulse, and then it will try to shock him again, or it'll say, take, you know, so, take it easy, he's back. And in this case, miraculously, uh, maybe the prayers of the people around us, he came back and his heart started to beat. I kept pushing air into his oxygen, into his lungs, and he began to pink up, uh, which is a great sign. And by the time we got him in the ambulance, he had uh, regained an, enough of an awareness that he knew he was at Newark. He was still a little out of it. How, how texting, is he now, Dr. Oz? You know, I just texted with the wife, uh, Barbara, and he, she says he's doing remarkably well. He's neurologically intact. The doctors have been screening him for a variety of different causes for his sudden death. Uh, but the good news is everything's working. And uh, they're going to transfer him back to a hospital uh, near to where he lives in central Jersey today. But I'm so over the moon happy uh, that that the CPR, this is CPR month, by the way. How ironic. Isn't that? But it's yeah, that we again all, that it works. I've heard you talk about we all can save a life. If you could hear my voice right now, you seriously, just take a minute or two to understand how to do CPR if you come across someone who's collapsed. There is something so eerie, so soul-sapping about watching someone die in front of you and not knowing what to do about it. You don't want to be in that situation. And it's so straightforward. You don't have to breathe in their mouth. Just do the chest compressions with your hands, which, again, is a you know several-minute lesson, and you can figure it out. If you can even get practice, that's better, but just understand intellectually what to do. And then the defibrillator device is the same thing. If you just put those patches on, they have a picture on them telling mm -hmm. you where to put them. Just listen to what the machine tells you. It can't hurt you or the patient, and you will save lives. 300,000 people collapsed like that. The survival rate in New York is, is less than 20% if you drop dead. 
outside of a hospital. We can do better than that. It's well, up I know to us. We control our destiny. I know it's not the first time you've jumped into action. I remember back in 2013 with the, the victim of the taxi uh, driver. There was a jogger that you came to their aid when they collapsed. Um, and now I hear also another family member is following in dad's footsteps. Well, well, the other big news for our family yesterday was my son Oliver got into medical school. So I'm over the moon. Uh, he's the, you know, I wanted one of my kids to become a doctor. It's such a great field, a wonderful calling. And uh, his, uh, that's where his heart went. So his mind followed. And uh, we're, over, we're obviously proud that he's going, but I'm actually happy because I think medicine is such a spectacular field that he'll be for his entire life blessed by being in it. Medicine is fantastic because you'll never learn it all. And so it forces you to be a lifelong learner. Well, we are glad that you were able to share the story with us, uh, helping out this man at the airport and that he seems to be doing well and great news about your son. Appreciate uh, seeing you, Dr. Oz. Good Take job, care, and Thank I don't you. care what you say, you are a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have a good one.